way I heard it, it was some French fellow named Napoleon said an army marches on its belly. Well, I don't know much about armies, but I mighty well know that's true about trail drives. The beeves eat what they can, but the drovers are a little more particular. So one day I'll cook them pig vests with buttons. That's salt pork and beans. Next day they'll get Kansas City fish. That's salt pork with brown berries, and that's beans. Day after that, they're liable to get sow belly. That's salt pork. This time with prairie strawberries, and that's beans. So the fourth day, I stay out of sight. My name's Wishbone, feeder of the Gill Favor outfit. Ain't you got nothing to do but stare at the back of my head? Well, the noon camp's about over, Mr. Wishbone. All the men are finished eating. That ain't gonna keep them from being hungry again at supper time. Then we got to feed them all over again. After that, it'll be breakfast, and then another noon camp. Tell you, Mushy, there's gotta be a stop to this. Somebody's got to feed the hen. Don't have to be me. Say, wish you. I hate to complain. No, but you will. The coffee you've been brewing lately has been a little bit strong. I swear, I've been a couple of spoons trying to stir it. That's the way I make coffee. And we've had salt pork and beans six days running. Don't you think maybe we ought to have a change? No. Baji, what's the matter with him? I don't know, Mr. Faber. He didn't even bother to shave this morning. How can you tell? <clears throat> I uh, noticed you didn't have your coffee. Uh, I brought you some. You think I'm going to drink that stuff? I'm trying to save what little stomach lining I got left. Quince, I'm getting old. No, we all are. Not as fast as me. Tell you, I can't remember how many of these trail drives I've been on. Nor even how many trains. Good night, loving the Comstock, the Chisholm, now the Sedalia. And I couldn't tell you the difference between any of them. Quince, there's got to be a time when a man quits these drives and settles down someplace. There's just one thing wrong with that, Wishbone. What's that? He wouldn't be happy doing anything else. I ain't so sure. I ain't so sure at all. this canyon. Curves on around them mountains, don't it? What about it? See that road? Yeah. Looks like a shortcut to me. If I figure I go that way, I'll be at night camping half the time. Are you just guessing? Well, I'm gonna go that way anyway. Now, wait a minute, Wishbone. You can't now, go Maybe on. you don't know it, but I got a real bad misery in my back. Well, maybe you ought to try driving standing up for a change. Oh, you like salt pork real good, don't you, Pete? Don't you threaten me. Oh, that bad, huh? Well, go ahead and try that road. Don't get lost, huh? Huh. 
me, a mountain man, for 20 years, and I'm gonna get lost. Hear that! <laughs> Up again. Now what? Oh, you know how unhappy he's been lately. Yeah. What's he done now? He took that road up there as a shortcut across the hill, just because he's got a sore back. Ah, let him have his way, Pete. I don't know what he's running into up there. It might lead him into a cliff. Ah, no such luck. You just have to turn around and come back then. <laughs> What's that thing say? I don't know, Mr. Wishbone. Sounds like a mining town. Most likely seven shacks and a hole in the ground. You ever been there? Oh, shut up. Why? for two wagons to pass on this stretch, Mr. Wishbone. I will have to back up then. Well, you ain't got more than a mile to back up. Who's backing up? You're backing up. I ain't backing up for nobody or nothing, mister. You're backing up for me. I got ten wagons behind me. Oh, stop bragging. Ain't you got something to say? I ain't got nothing to say. I'm the crook's louse. Yeah, I can believe it, too. Can't you, Mr. Dietrich? All right, you were. You don't have to back up if you don't feel like it. His, uh, his horses, they look real tired. You heard what he said, boy. The horses are tired. Well, I'm a man whose temper ain't easy aroused. But you keep your hands off of that heart! You want to try? Down out of there. Well, now, why don't you get down? Why don't you try to make? All right, stay there then. This is the best cure for a bad back ever invented. I ought to punch you right in the nose. Well, why me? Because you're the nurse one handy. I can't raise my arm. 
Oh, go look at the wagon. Wagon box busted. That's all I can see, Mr. Wishbone. Oh, that's all, is it? Crew ain't never gonna let me live this down. You hurt real bad? I ain't been this bad since that time I fell off the roof in Fort Worth. Well, are you just gonna let me sit here? Oh, I need a doctor. What are you looking for? A doctor. Oh, well, they ain't growing them on trees yet. Maybe they got one in Iron City. Get away. Miss Spencer, you're the best bartender this side of St. Louis. So what's so special about the other side of St. Louis? Fill <laughs> <laughs> her up. Mr. Grogan, you've had enough. Enough? I've only had a couple. You've had three. And supposing I want six? You won't get them in this bar. Ah, oh, you know better than that, Grogan. Who ever heard of a lady bartender? Well, Mr. Dietrich hired Miss Spencer here. You want to discuss it with him? <laughs> you know, Miss Spencer, I got no complaints, but how come you know so much about drinks? The late Mr. Spencer used to tend bar. We had an ideal marriage. He always discussed his work with me. I see. Uh, Miss Spencer, could I have another drink? Mr. Huber, you can. Thank you, ma'am. You know, Miss Spencer, when the miners get paid, you're going to get a lot more business. Only the ones that aren't married. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. What for? Are you a doctor? Do I look like one? No. What do you have, son? I'm a doctor, ma'am. Aren't you feeling well? No, it's Mr. Wishbone. Mr. Wish what? Wishbone. He's hurt real bad. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, you take him right to my place next door. Go out the door, turn to the right, and go upstairs and tell him to wait. Well, Mr. Wishbone ain't the waiting type, man. He's been sitting outside quite a while. I'll be there in a few minutes. Well, he was sitting outside. Oh, the poor man. Got to go upstairs next door. I don't have to go nowhere till I hear what that Jasper's got to say. There you are, Mr. Dietrich. The books are balanced. Well, news ain't bad, folks. Ain't good, but it ain't bad. So, the way it works out, each one of you miners gets $23 for his share of the ore. Twenty-three dollars? Why, that don't hardly pay for the groceries. Well, you uh, always got credit here at the Emporium. We already owe too much. The more we've been working, the less money we've been making. You question Mr. Dimity's figures? 
Well, uh, I ain't questioning nobody's figures, but I'd like to know why we ain't getting as much as we used to. Well, uh, or ain't fetching as much as it uh, used to. I've been hurt as bad as anybody. You don't look to me like you're suffering much. You. Again. What do you know about ore? Nothing. Except if you say the price is going down, I say it's going up. That's about the same as calling me a liar, ain't it? You're brighter than I thought you was. Noah, he's not a well man. I feel fine. You better come along with me. Oh. Who's she? She's the bartender. I told her all about you. I told you to get me a doctor, not a I can help you, Mr. Wishbone. Well, Sarah, get back to your bartending. Well, what right do you got ordering her around? She's my fiancé. That's what right I got. Oh, the poor woman. We ain't been properly introduced, ma'am. I'm Mrs. Spencer. How do you do? It's a pleasure, Mr. Wishbone. Oh, stop mixing with the riffraff. Riffraff? And me responsible for 25 men and 3,000 head of cattle? You are? You're mighty well told I am. Now, what's all this got to do with the price of beans? Should I throw him out, Mr. Dietrich? I ain't got nothing to do with the price of beans, but it might have a lot to do with the price of ore. The way I heard it in San Antonio, the price is going up all the time. Of course, uh, you can prove what you just said. Well, yeah, I might just at that. Mushy, take that paper out of my hat. Now open it up. San Antonio Daily Gazette makes my hat fit better. Now I'll give it to one of them miners. Railroad construction raises prices of iron ore. <laughs> well, I, I didn't say that uh, that prices hadn't gone any higher. I, I said that prices wasn't the same as they used to be. I, my expenses are going higher too. That much higher, Mr. Dietrich. Well, oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, yes, yes, Mr. Dietrich. Uh, I uh, guess I was in too much of a hurry when I balanced the books. Uh, uh, oh, yes, yes. It should be $43 a share. Oh, wow. All right, Mushy, put the paper back in my hat. We sure do thank you, oh, Mr. We're obliged. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! trying to do? Poison me? Well, it's just smelling salts, that's all. Oh, smelling salts? What do you think I am, a woman? With that beard? <clears throat> what am I doing here? Well, some of the miners carried you upstairs. Well, why am I lying in bed the middle of the day? Well, it's evening, and you're not a well man. Ah! Oh! I'm not a well man. We've got to do something about this arm of Now, wait a minute. You're not a doctor. Well, I was a nurse during the war. Well, the war's over. What are you trying to do? Twist it off? Oh! Now, see if you can move your arm. I can't move my arm. I, I can move my arm. Well, I'll uh, be... Uh, uh. Language, Mr. Wishbone. Sorry, ma'am. Well, what are you doing standing there? You want me to sit down? I told you to get me a doctor. Well, she fixed your arm, didn't she? She didn't fix my back. Well, I wouldn't worry about that. Well, of course you wouldn't. It's my back. What's that? A bathtub. Who for? You. What month's this? Is that all, Miss Spencer? I think so, Mr. Melvin. Is there anything else you want? All I want is to get out of here. You can go along now. Sure. Now, the best thing for your back is a hot bath. Now, you get right into that bathtub. Now, you get out of here. Shut up. I ain't said nothing. No, but you were going to. Well, go on back to the herd and tell Mr. Favor what happened. Show him where the chuck wagon is. Yes, sir, Mr. Wishbone. I'll catch up as soon as my back's better.
Sarah, I don't want any more of this foolishness. What do you want? Now, when are you coming back to the Emporium? I'm not. You mean that I gotta go find myself another bartender? You also have to find yourself another fiancé, Mr. Dietrich. Oh, you ain't serious about this, Sarah. My name is Mrs. Spencer. Well, at least you could tell me why. You're not an honest man, cheating those miners the way you did. I did, I did it for you. I, I did it so that I could build you the biggest, fanciest house in town when we got married. I don't want the biggest or fanciest house in town. Well, what do you want? That bewhiskered little idiot upstairs? Goodbye, Mr. Dietrich. Look, if he ain't out of town in 24 hours, I'll, I'll kill him. Oh, now you get out of here. Mr. Wishbone, I was a nurse. Well, you ain't now. I'm a widow. Well, I ain't. Mr. Wishbone, I've got to massage your back. Now you stay away from me, or so help me, I'll, I'll, I'll drown myself. No, I mean it. Don't you come any closer. Now be careful. More coffee, Mr. Wishbone? Don't mind if I do. You know something, Miss Spencer. I don't remember when I've had better spoon bread. Now don't start trying to flatter me. Oh, I mean it. Well, that's the best breakfast I ever had. Well... It's none of my business, Mr. Wishbone, but don't tell me when you're out on the trail driving all those cattle, they don't give you a good breakfast. Uh, not exactly. Well, I don't know how you stand it. I've been kind of wondering that myself. I guess I'd better be thinking about getting back to that herd. I'm an awful lot better, thanks to you. Well, your back ought to rest a few days longer. Do you think so? Oh, I certainly do. You've been working too hard. Well, that's right. Probably they don't even appreciate it. Well, you're mighty well told. That's right. Oh, why don't you go in and rest a while? I'll clean up the dishes. Uh, where'd you get this? Oh, my late husband took it in trade from a drunken drover who... Well, some of them do drink, Mr. Wishbone. I wouldn't be surprised. It sure is a beautiful stove, though. Oh, you like your little joke, don't you? No, I mean it. Why, it's the most beautiful stove i ever seen. That's the kind of stove a man dreams about. Well, I suppose so. I guess I just never appreciated it. The other stove my late husband gave me as a wedding present. I guess it's the sentiment makes the difference. Wedding present. I don't suppose you want me smoking in the parlor. Oh, don't be silly. I love the smell of tobacco. I must have took a longer nap than I thought. What? 3.30, it says. <laughs> That's been 3.30 ever since the late Mr. Spencer passed on. There hasn't been anybody in town since then that could fix it. Well, maybe things have changed. What do you mean, Mr. Wishbone? Well, I mean, if I had a mind to, I think I could fix that clock. Would you? Sure. Mr. Wishbone, be careful of your back. Let me help you. Oh, 
I'm sorry, ladies, we're closed. Oh, oh no. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But we're nearly out of supplies. Yeah. And I'm sorry. Oh, oh God. Let's try to get in, please. Mr. Dietrich. Yeah. Do you realize how much money you're losing every minute you remain closed? No, oh, I can afford it. It'll ruin the books. It'll ruin them miners first. It'll teach them not to listen to every stranger comes into town with a lot of... Information about the real price of iron ore? Well, wait till their bellies start sticking to their backbones. They'll stop worrying about any price except the price I offer them. And I'll be glad to get that. That's right, Mr. Dietrich. Yeah. Mr. Dietrich. Has it occurred to you that if the miners get desperate enough, they might start hauling the ore themselves? No, they, they ain't got the wagon for it. Besides, none of them got the brains to think of a thing like that. I did. <laughs> Mr. Wishbone might. Never mention his name again. Yes, sir. I, I mean, no, sir. Gilbert. Yes. Go down to the mine. Tell the boys I'm shutting down the bar. Yes, sir, Mr. Dietrich. I'd ought to shake him up. Mr. Wishbone? In here, Miss Fancher. What on earth are you doing in the kitchen, Mr. Wishbone? Just cooking us up a little supper. You shouldn't be cooking. Well, let's not say anything about that until after you taste it. Isn't there a little too much? Well, no, ma'am. Well, that's just a little light soup with thimble-sized cornmeal dumplings. You didn't have any clams, because I could have made you a chowder. Uh, there, I got drop biscuits frying. Might have been better if I'd had a sourdough keg, but, oh well. And that's the goulash. The what? The goulash. Uh, beef, salt pork, cracklings, uh, onions, carrots, peas, peppercorn, parsley. No, I couldn't find any parsley. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, that's all right. It'll probably turn out fine anyway. Oh, well, that's not too much for supper, is it? Uh, well, I, I meant the portions. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, it is kind of a lot, isn't it? I don't know any recipes for less than 25 men. 20? Uh, I thought maybe we might both be hungry tonight. Oh. Oh, excuse me. We hate crowding in on you like this, Miss Spencer, but we've just got to see Mr. Wishbone. Well, um, he's kind of busy now, but you're welcome to come in. Thanks. We need help, and... Well, Mr. Wishbone gave us such good advice before Maybe that... Maybe we'd have been better off without it. And without him. Amy, it ain't Mr. Wishbone's fault. What well, ain't my fault? Dietrich's closed the Emporium down. He said he ain't gonna sell us no more supplies. Well, just go on down to the next town and get your supplies. Probably be a lot cheaper. It ain't only that. He's refusing to take our ore to market anymore. He's bluffing. I don't think so. He's he's pretty mad. Well, what's he want? He wants you run out of town. Just because I showed him up for a crook? Well, that, that ain't the only reason. What's the other reason? I, uh, I told him I wasn't going to marry him. Well, that ain't got anything to do with me. Has it? Well, like I was saying, Dietrich's bluffing. If he closes down that emporium, he ain't gonna make any money on them supplies. And if he don't haul ore, what's he gonna do with all them freight wagons of his? Yeah. Uh, don't forget, he's got all them men of his to pay. Now, he's got good money invested in them supplies. If he holds on to them too long, they'll spoil on him. 
No, sir. All you got to do is just stand firm. Dietrich will come around begging you to do business with him. He's right. Makes sense. Meanwhile, what are we going to do about supper? Well, it just so happens there's supper here enough for everybody. If you wouldn't mind having them. I wouldn't mind at all, Mr. Wishbone. <laughs> well, come on in, everybody. <laughs> Miners in town are over at Miss Spencer's house. Yelling for Wishbone's hide, huh? Eating his cooking in Miss Spencer's parlor. Mr. Dietrich, how about me and some of the boys going over there and spoiling their appetites? That's a good idea. No. I wouldn't want to upset Sarah that much. Well, the 24 hours you gave him to get out of town are almost up. They were up exactly. Be two hours and 14 minutes ago. Well, stop pushing me. This is an affair of the heart, Hubert. Now, in dealing with affairs of the heart, you don't just settle them like that. You understand what I mean? Yes, sir. Get him a drink. I don't think he really understands. Good night. I never would have believed a man could cook so good. Mm, that goulash, especially Mr. Wishbone. I'd give anything for the recipe. Well, I could be talked into parting with it. <laughs> good night. Good, good night, night, Mrs. Spencer, and thank you. Good night. You're sure going to miss that Mr. Wishbone when he goes back to the drive. If he goes back. Sarah, you ain't meaning. What? I suppose if he cut those whiskers off, he wouldn't be a bad looking man. I like his whiskers. It's just a matter of taste, Sarah. Does he know he ain't going back? Not yet. Good night, Mr. Wishbone. Good night. It's getting late, Amy. I sure hope that ain't the last supper you're going to cook for us, Mr. Wishbone. Good night, Miss Spencer. Good night. Good night. Sure are nice people. They're wonderful neighbors. Man don't get much chance to be friendly with neighbors on a cattle drive. Well, I suppose there are other things more important. I don't know. The years start to add up on you, you begin to wonder. What were you wondering about, Mr. Wishbone? Well, if it ain't time to settle down, sink roots, make friends. Well, I can't say as to that, Mr. Wishbone, but if a man was to decide that's what he wanted, I can't think of a nicer place than Iron City. I wouldn't be surprised what you're right. Why don't you sit down and rest that back of yours? Smoke your pipe and I'll clean up the dishes. <laughs> you really didn't need to help me. Oh, well, I enjoyed it. Sure is a beautiful stove. Uh, supposing the man was to come along and, well, decide to settle down in Iron City, what would he do? He ain't a miner. No, he wouldn't have to be. Not if he could cook as good as you do. Cook as good as I can? I wasn't talking about me, was I? Weren't you? I was. Well, most of the miners are single. If somebody was to open a good restaurant in Iron City, they'd be eating there every night and twice on Sundays. Well, that's a good idea. Oh, but I ain't even got a stove to cook on. I could give you mine. Oh, but I'd still need money for 
furnishings and stocking provisions and stuff like that. Well, I've got a little saved up, Mr. Wishbone. Oh, well, I couldn't use your money. Unless I was married to you or something. I can't answer that, Mr. Wishbone. Well, you can't. You haven't asked me yet. Oh, well, I mighty well am, Miss Brencher. Oh, I'd be very happy to marry you, Mr. Wishbone. I guess you're going to have to get used to calling me by my first name. What is it? Well, I got two of them. George Washington. Mm. More coffee, Mr. Favor? No, thanks. How long is it going to take for Wishbones back to get better? I don't know, Mr. Favor. Last I seen him, he's getting ready to take a hot bath. Well, he must be out of it by now. Well, he'll be back in a couple of days. I don't know. Mr. Wishbone's been talking about quitting a drive and settling down. He's been talking like that for the last 10 years. And now with that widow woman taking care of him like that. Widow? What widow woman? Mrs. Spencer. She's the one that's giving him the hot bath. Oh, no. Maybe... Better see if the men want any more coffee. Pete? Yeah, I know, I know. I shouldn't let him take the shortcut back there. Well, how was I to know there was a widow woman waiting in them mountains? All right. I guess now we better start worrying about whether we'll live long enough until Mushy learns how to cook. <laughs> you to be in the kitchen, Mr. Wishbone? Oh, when I set food out to cook, it's got a fan for itself. Oh, I feel that one. It's exciting, isn't it? I just love the name you picked for the restaurant. Cafe D Iron City. Shows you must have traveled a lot. Oh, well, I've been around. Who'd have believed just a week ago you'd be setting up your own place? Well, I can hardly believe it now. Well, you are happy about it, aren't you? Well, sure. Sure I am. Mrs. Spencer. Mr. Wishbone, I picked up all your gear from the camp and dropped it off at Mrs. Spencer's house. Oh, fine. Uh, you saw Mr. Favor and told him I was quitting? Yeah. Well, how do you take it? Pretty broke up, huh? Well, all he said was, if that's what you want, it's all right with him. Oh, well, uh, must have been hiding his real feelings. Uh, how about the others? Did they carry on any? Well, not that I noticed. Well, and they give you my gear without any trouble? Yeah, as soon as I asked for it. Well, thanks. Good evening, Mr. Hall. Good evening, ma'am. What are you doing here, Noah Dietrich? Why, uh, me and the boys just uh, come over for some supper. That's not the real reason. Why did you come? I told you. Well, it's early. We're not serving yet. Oh, we, uh... We don't mind waiting, Sarah. Mrs. Spencer, if you please. Say, where's the, uh, the man cook? I ain't never seen a man cook before. <laughs> well, you're seeing one now. I told them we weren't serving yet. We not only ain't serving yet, we ain't serving you at all. Why not? Our money's as good as anybody else's. You ain't hauling iron ore for the miners. You ain't selling them supplies. So you ain't eating here. How'd you like to go back to the kitchen and steak as a cream puff? How'd you like punching the nose? You looking for a fight? You ain't big enough to give me one. Well, if 
As long as you're so anxious, what? Oh, no. No. Krogan. Yeah? You're about the same size as Wishbone. I sure am, boss. Now, don't ever send a boy on a man's errand. Now, put him up. That was really the reason you came here, wasn't it? You want to know the real reason I came? Just to stop you from making a fool of yourself, Sarah. Jumping Jupiter, my creep house are burning! <laughs> well, come on in, everybody, and find yourself a table. Sarah, I sure do admire your new fiancé. You know something, Miss Spencer? I wouldn't be a bit surprised if this town didn't elect Mr. Wishbone Sheriff. That is, if he stays around long enough. If he stays around long enough. We did very well tonight, Mr. Wishbone. Well, that idiot don't know how to handle beeves. Well, you won't have to worry about things like that anymore. Uh, I guess not. Mr. Wishbone, are you going to miss being with the cattle drive? Of course not. The only interest I got in beeves now is cooking them. Well, you've had a hard day. Why don't you try to get some sleep? Yeah. Sorry I come so late, Mr. Wishbone. Do you know how it is on a drive? I sure do, Mushy. Well, I'm glad to see you. You are? I sure am. Mr. Faber sent you, huh? Well, I kind of thought he would. Found out he couldn't do without me, huh? Yes, sir. They can get along without Wishbone for a day, two days, maybe even a week. But after that, everybody must be pretty sick of your cooking by now, huh? Everybody likes my cooking. That must be the first joke you ever made, Mushy. I ain't joking, Mr. Wishbone. You mean everybody likes your cooking? Sure. It just seems they don't have big appetites anymore. Well, if everything's so fine and dandy at the herd, why'd you come here? Well, I couldn't find some of your cooking supplies, so Mr. Favor sent me to ask you. Find them yourself. All right, Mr. Wishbone. That's the way you want it. I'll be riding back. Well, now, you don't have to hurry off. Why don't you stay the night? What for? Well, give me a chance. Maybe by morning I'll make up a list. Might help you out. Mr. Favor said to ride right back. Now, you stay right here. Now, go on in there and sit down. Now, don't forget, I got a lot of questions to ask you. I was with that herd a long time. Good evening, Miss Spencer. Good evening. Now, come on over here. Well, how's grazing been for the bees? Kind of scanning, Mr. Wishbone. Mr. Favor says we've got to keep pushing her. Well, I think I'll take a little walk, Mr. Wishbone. Huh? I said I think I'll take a little walk. Well, that's a fine idea, Miss Spencer. Kind of scanty, huh? Well, that's rough on the bees, rougher on the men, come to think of it. Now, that's a time when you've got to be especially sure the men are well fed. Yeah, I guess so. Guess nothing. You know it. I'm telling you. Yes, sir, Mr. Wishbone.
Sarah. I mean, Mrs. Spencer. What are you doing here? So I kind of been hanging around, hoping you'd come out so I could have a talk with you. About what? Sarah, I've been a fool. That you have. I shouldn't have tried cheating them miners, and I shouldn't have closed the emporium, but I didn't know what I was doing. Why didn't you? Because I was mad. No. I was... because I was jealous. Mr. Dietrich, are you telling Sir, me... Sir, I got... I got strong feelings for you. I, uh... I was thinking of taking a little walk. Would you, would you mind if I come along with you? No. Now, wasn't that a fine breakfast, Mushy? Yes, sir, except I ain't used to eating indoors. Well, neither am I, but... Ain't you glad I made you stay overnight? I don't know what Mr. Fayer's gonna say when I get back. Well, now, don't you worry about him. He gives you any trouble, I'll tell him off good and proper. But Mr. Wishbone, you ain't going back with me. Oh, I forgot. I guess I ain't. Mr. Wishbone. You are going back. I don't think I heard you right. You heard me right. What about me marrying you? And what about me running that cafe? Oh, Mr. Wishbone. You don't really want either one of those things. No, that ain't so. I do want to marry you, and I want to run that cafe. I want to settle down and sink roots, and... I want to go back to the herd. Well, what are you sitting there for? Miss Spencer, I want to tell you how much I appreciate your understanding, and, well, if I was going to get married, You'd be the only one I'd want to marry. Thank you. What's going on? That stove is what you really fell in love with, Mr. Wishbone. Noah and I want you to have it. Noah? north, you have to trail across nearly a thousand miles of the wrinkled skin of Earth, over terrain as strange and different as paradise above from the hot place below. Mostly it's too rough or too steep, too wet or dry, too hot or cold, too windy, too lonely. But you take what comes and find a way to move the beeves on through. At least you try. My name's Gil Favor, Trail Boss. What kind of fool Jasper's leading that herd? He will never get through them out there. Not that way. He lose half his beeves, maybe more. Senor, we had better get a move on. In a minute, Joe. Wonder where he's from. The trail boss down there? Not from this country, that is certain. Somebody ought to warn him. Uh, senor. That would only be a few miles out of our way. But you do not know who they might be. You said it yourself. Nobody from around here. Senor, and our lost. I'm just riding home. I'm not running away from anybody. If they want to catch me, let them come.
This ground's awful. You sure we're on the right trail? You know a better one? Well, I didn't say that. It's just this is the worst cattle country I've ever seen. We're getting through it just as quick as we can. Do your job. Stop complaining. Look, I'm only trying to point out that this laverock is cutting their hooves something fierce. I know it only too well. You just let me do the worrying. Come on, let's get moving. Well, I don't know how much further this wagon's going to go in this. Keep moving till I tell you to stop. What's eating him? Ain't any harder on him than it is the rest of us. Maybe he's tired, Mr. Wishbone. Meaning you and me ain't? I ain't a bit tired. Then you be the one to get out and check that Haines train. Go on. Well? We ought to be our way through, but I wouldn't guarantee it. We might get to tangle up that mile pie and never find our way out. I don't know. You don't know? Aren't you supposed to be scout? But I'm not going to take the responsibility. You won't take my advice. What's your advice? Go back to the main trail. We know we can get through there. Four days dry. We'll make it to the river in two days this way. Oh, uh, maybe. We might spend a lot more than four days dry on this stuff. I said we got to make it to the river in two days. You just find a way. That's all. What's the matter? Move out. Are you sick? expect me to be doing? Singing and telling snappy jokes in a place like this? Well, no, but I don't expect you to act like a hammer-headed coyote with a case of the colic, either. Maybe you just did your job. We're all doing our best, Mr. Paver. It's your orders that brought us this way, so don't blame somebody else if it's too tough for you. Pete, listen to me. This is Mr. Paver. Honey. Who are you? My name's Cord. John Cord? That's right. This is my ramrod, Joe Becerra. Uh, this is Pete Nolan, my scout. Glad to meet you. You driving a herd near here? I took my herd up to Abilene earlier this year. I'm headed way back home. I wish we could have come this way earlier. Probably a lot easier. Must have been more water. More water, yes. I wouldn't say it was easier even then. Somebody told you to come through this way? No, why? Then can I ask why you're doing it? I figures to save two days to water. Your scout give you any argument on that? One that's got to decide the route. Maybe you've got another way. I was surprised to find out you were bossing this herd. Why? I always heard you were a good cowman. Get some complaint against me? Yeah. You're killing good beef. Now, wait a minute, mister. Keep out of it, Roddy. Go on. You take a herd that size into that malapai. You lose the best part of them, if not all of them. Hurt them, cripple them. Maybe you lose some men and horses, too. It shouldn't concern you. That ought to concern you. You won't save any time in that maze. You might never reach water. The regular trails melt by too. Not any better than this and the long way around. But it's a trail that goes through. It's poor judgment to go wandering off into the Badlands without even knowing if there's a way through. What is it? You trying to pick a fight? I'm only trying to tell you you're making a bad mistake. Mister, we don't need your advice. There's bad manners that come I'm in here. I'm not interested in manners. I'm interested in the beeves. I don't like to see them led into this kind of torture. Well, this herd's my worry. I'm the one who has to decide what to do with it. So let's get back to it. All right, then. I'm sorry for the rest of you. Try to keep them moving. Back to work. What do you think? Joe, I just don't figure it's time for anybody to think. You know, them beeves are mighty foot sore already. Still a good waste of water. I've never seen any place as bad as this. Almost like some other world. Some dead place. Pete? 
You think maybe this fella Cord might be right? Well, you heard what he said as well as I did. Who is he? You know him? No, but I've heard of him often enough. He's busted a lot of drives. Mostly over on the good night loving trail. I never heard anything bad about him. But then I never did about Mr. Favor either. What's on at him? He's scared, for one thing. He's got a right to be. Well, then why don't he ask for some help? Why don't he take advice? Why don't you ask him? He's the boss. Coffee to warm you. Ought to have something in your stomach. Oh, thanks, Wish. Say, look, I didn't mean to jump at you today. Oh, that's all right. Everybody's kind of jumpy. <coughs> you call that coffee? Well, go ahead and drink it. It'll do you good. What you put in that? Just a tonic. Something for what ails you. What do you mean, what ails me? Well, something does. You sure ain't been yourself lately, biting everybody's head off. Maybe you're coming down with egg use, what I think. Just keep you thinking to yourself. I'm all right. No, you ain't. And it's time you admitted it. Look, Mr. Favor, you ain't alone here. You got friends. Nobody's fighting you, you know. You ought to take some advice. Look, you want to take over the job? Well, you ain't thinking very good. And the way things are going, ain't none of us, man nor beast, going to get out of these badlands alive. I hear it. I told you we should not risk a fire. I told you I'm not hiding from anybody. Let them come. They have no honor. They will shoot you in the back. Not with you facing me, Joe. Besides, there's only one. And he's making too much noise. I've got a hunch who it is. Hello there. Come on in, Mr. Faber. Down, Mr. Favor. Coffee? Uh, you got anything stronger? Well, I have a bottle of tequila. Good. Stronger the better. You look hot enough. <sighs> Thanks. That what you came for? Look, you think you could get my herd through the river? Now you got him deep in the Malapai. You want somebody to pull you out. I'm asking you, do you think you could? Not without losing some beeves. You've cost two extra days already. You could do it. I could. All right, then do it. What do you mean? Just what I said. Take him through to the river. All the way if you have to. 
I got a tenth coming and have a third of it. Half if you have to go all the way. Why can't you give it to one of your own men and save the money? It's a trail that's new to us, and it's a tough one. I never heard of a trail boss quitting in the middle of a drive, as long as he could sit a saddle, especially if he was in trouble. I'd like to know why. Just take him through. Well, what do you say? No. You want more? No, I've made my year's wages already. What do you want, then? Nothing. I do it as a good turn for somebody I respected, but you couldn't pay me. I'm not asking you to do it for me. What about over your fine talk about the beef? You said those steers were your concern. Now you're asking me to pull you out. I'm offering you a business proposition. And I'm refusing it. I thought there was something wrong with him. He's got a fever. Texas fever? Pox cholera? I don't know. It's strange. What is it, Mr. Faber? There's nothing to worry about. There's nothing catching. What's wrong? Come on, tell us, man. I took a hit in a war skull fracture. He warned me it might bother me someday. Could mean brain fever, blindness, maybe worse. Anyway, a man can't push a trail herd with half a mind. How do you know that's what this is? It's like they told him. Bad headaches, everything blurry. It's hard to think. Could be just a bad fever. No, I can't take the chance it'll get worse. I need your help. I'll have to be boss and complete charge. Uh, all right. More, with you around, the man won't accept me. But that's not the important thing. You've got to see a medical doctor. Yeah, maybe it'll help. Joe here will take you into Weberville. There's a doctor there. When you get well, you can catch up. Senor, do you think this is wise? Maybe not. You'll be going right back to where they are. I ain't that much better than waiting for them to catch me. But I must be with you. No. You take him into Weberville. He'd never make it alone. And stay around and see if he gets well. Or... Then you can catch up. Do you think these men will accept you as boss? I've got to see to it that they do. By the way, thanks. Why? I'm doing it for the beeves. What are you doing up this hour? This ain't your watch. Well, if you're gonna be up for breakfast, you can give me a hand. What's going on here, Rowdy? Mr. Favor ain't back yet? You know, it's almost morning. He ain't showed up yet. That ain't like him riding off like that. Well, he's probably out with the Nighthawker. No, none of the Nighthawkers have seen him all night. Well, that ain't like him. But then he wasn't himself. I didn't say anything about this, but I think he's sick. Maybe he just went out to check the Nighthawkers and got lost. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he had an accident and he's out there hurt somewhere. Well, now, wait a minute. He's going off half cocked. Rush out in these malapies in the dark, break a horse's leg, get ourselves... Wait a minute. That ain't a Nighthawker coming from that direction. Come on, men. Glad to see you're up early. What are you doing here? Got to wake everybody up. I want an early start. What are you talking about? Just as I'm saying. I'm taking over the herd. You know, where's Mr. Favor? He said to tell you, you better do as good a job of ramrodding for me as you did for him. And that goes for you too, Pete. Nolan's the name. I was going to fire you first thing. Until he told me how you argued with him about going back and taking the regular trail. You better get ready to ride. You would, huh? Well, let me tell you, you're going a little too fast for me. You better tell me where Mr. Favor is. About 20 miles on toward Rebelville. You trying to say Mr. Favor left us and turned the herd over to you? That's right. I don't believe that. Wait. 
He was sick, wasn't he? Yeah. What do you mean, sick? Sick with what? I don't know with what. But sick enough he had to get to a doctor pretty quick. That ain't like Mr. Favor. He didn't hold much with doctors. He never got so sick I couldn't fix him up with assaults or paragoric or tonic or something. Yeah, I don't seem like him to leave the herd. Yeah, without telling anybody. Maybe he thought he had something catching. But to turn the herd over to a plumb stranger. No, I don't savvy. I don't believe it. He'd have turned the herd over to me. Or Pete, maybe. But uh, what reason would he have to turn it over to you, huh? I guess it's reason enough for him, because that's what he did. You want to see the papers he gave me? The transit orders, the bills of sale, all the rest? Yeah, I'd like to see him. You could have taken these papers off of him. There's a lot of money in being a trail boss. Not unless you get the cattle through. And that's what we have to do. Wait a minute, Cord. Mr. Favor didn't even like you. In fact, you came in here and insulted him, and now you're going to take the herd over? You're crazy, mister. You think fighting me is going to prove anything, even if you lick me? There's maybe forty, maybe $50,000 worth of beef out there. And somebody's got to take the responsibility of getting it out of the death trap it's in and across a good many more miles of the same to water. And more than that, over hundreds of miles more, through who knows what kind of country, what kind of weather. You want to accept that responsibility? Any of the rest of you? Well, Mr. Favor accepted it. That's why you took his orders, and that's why you'll take mine. Where's the cook? Right here. Feed everybody as fast as you can. I want to get out by first light. Your wagon in the lead. One thing, mister. Is he coming back? Is he going to be all right? I don't know. All right, move straight out and take the lead. Set the pace as fast as the terrain will allow. Do you mind telling us where we're going? I don't mind telling you, so long as it's understood I don't have to. I want my orders obeyed without argument and without question. You certainly got yourself deeper into this mess than I expected. There are only two things to do. One is to move back to last water. That's two days. Long one. And three more dry after that. At least. It's only a day from water the way we're going now. It'll be the longest day you ever spent, especially the way you were going. There is one other way that'll only take two days, if we can get through. Yeah, and that's two more days without water. Four in all, and bad terrain. You all know what that means. Mr. Favor never had any trouble with that. And I don't expect to. You said if we get through. If we decide to go that way, we'll just have to get through. Well, when are you gonna decide? I already have. We're not moving back. Save your water. All right, move out. Head for those peaks over there. I'll be there shortly to lead the way. can't just go off and leave Mr. Favor. You want to go chasing into Weberville looking for him and leave these cattle to die of thirst? Let's wake him up. No, I don't want to push off the background. Those two-year-olds have started it. Always a few chuck wagon followers. The others will fall in after them. That way they're going to be all spread out. Let them be. A single file. I don't want them bunched in this stuff. Nobody but the wagon and Pete Nolan with me on point. Only three, maybe four, on drag. You figure the ones, Yates. The rest of you, including Swing, were right flank. Strung out with them. Staggered on opposite sides. It's up to you to keep them moving while I find a way, understand? Yeah. All right, let's go. One thing sure, we're making better time today. Well, it's going good this way. Yeah, they know they're headed for water. Well, maybe. Who steers this way? No swing riders. Better lose a few strays riding to get hung up.
No water. I found that bed ground, like you said. Some pretty good grass, plenty of room for them spread out. I figure it's gonna be too far, but the way you're making time, looks like you're gonna make it. We'll make it. Have you ever been over this way before? Not exactly, but I bet it there once. Well, did you go down to the river from there? Well, I don't see how, because it sure looked rugged to me and dangerous. You afraid of a little danger? That would all depend on the danger. For instance, I've been thinking that wouldn't be Dragoon Crossing, would it? You've heard of it. Yeah, but they wanted to stay away from it, said the Bates gang are holding it and demanding tribute if anybody tried to cross, taking five cents a head for cattle. They asked me ten. Did you pay it? Would you? Well, that also would depend. On whether your men are willing to back you? Mine were. You had to fight. Didn't take a fight. Then. Had more men than this. Had them outnumbered. What about these men? Well, they'd have done it for Mr. Favor. I don't know about you. I tell you, I never would have believed it. You bet. You know, we came a long way through that stuff today. You gotta hand it to Cord. He sure knows his business, all right, don't he? Why don't you keep your ideas to yourself? Now, look, Roddy, I'm not saying no bad against Mr. Faber. He's a great boss, too. He's our boss. Remember that, will you? Well, of course. But giving Cord his due don't cost Mr. Faber nothing. Ain't no good saying he don't know his business. You're forgetting how Cord run him down. That's true, he did. Well, maybe he was right. I mean, Mr. Faber wasn't himself. He was sick and he made a mistake. Sure, anybody can make a mistake. What are you doing, sticking up for that Jasper? He's getting the herd to water. And he ain't so bad. Well, he ain't hard to get along with for a while. Sure, just till Mr. Faber gets back. How do you know he's gonna get back? How do you know Cord didn't do something with him? There's a lot of money in being a trail boss. Uh, Roddy, I don't think Cord's that kind. He wouldn't do that. You don't know that. No one around here knows that. Pete, what do you think? I'd say Cord's all right. He's a good cowman, that's for certain, so that makes him my kind of people. Sure settled a lot of doubt in my mind. But it ain't Cord I'm worried about. Then what? Tomorrow we're going down to the river over some of the roughest trail we've ever been over. But that ain't all. When we get there, it's Dragoon Cross. Oh. That settles it. That means either pay or fight, and I'm not gonna fight for Cord. We we'll let him graze here for a while in the morning. The grass is fresher, possibly even some moisture. Wishbone will lead out and we let them fall in themselves, just like this morning. Only it's very important we keep them strung out, especially when they get the smell of water. You don't need to pretend you didn't hear me, Cord. I ain't gonna fight for you. That's so. That's right. You could have told us we were going to the Dragoon Crossing. You know what that means. Well, what would you have done? Gone back the other way? Well, I ain't gonna fight for you, mister. Ten cents ahead, that'll come to around $300. It'll have to come out of your wages. You figure you can raise that much among you? Buy yourselves out of a fight? We can't do that, Rowdy. Maybe there won't even be there. Maybe there won't even be a fight at all. Maybe not, but if they are. What would Mr. Favor have done? Well, there must be another crossing somewhere. It's too late for that, and you know it. You led us right into a trap. Anybody who doesn't want to go down to the river with me tomorrow, he can get out right now. Take your things and get out. That goes for all of you. But if you go, you don't come back. And I think Mr. Faber would agree to that. If you stay, you've got to be prepared to do whatever has to be done. Oh, I meant to say good work today. All of you. Well, how am I going to feed those night hawkers if somebody don't go relieve them? Thank you. 
Mm -hmm. Mm. Senor. Mm. Are you all right? Mm. Sure. You are feeling much better. No, senor? Must have been a nightmare. The medicine the doctor gave you is working fine. By tomorrow, you will feel much better. Medicine? Hmm. It was not what you told us. It was not your head. It was a fever made your head hurt. Oh, a bad case. But nothing to worry about now. Well, I can get back there. Oh, well, two or three days, maybe. Better to rest first. Send your card, we'll take care of cattle. All right, fix you something out, huh, amigo? Yeah. Yates, we're going to have to watch them close today. When they smell water, it may be a job to hold them in. Yates. I admire your loyalty to Mr. Faber. I expect the same loyalty from my own ramrod. But a drover can have only one first loyalty. That is to the job he's been trusted with. Look, I don't need any lesson from you. You know, you'll make somebody a good ramrod. Maybe Mr. Faber, but not me. What's that mean? You're firing me? Not yet. I'll need you today. After that, we'll see. Yeah, well, I'll quit first. That's the thing about you I don't like. Now, you better ride up ahead with Nolan and see the trail we have to take. You'll be better prepared to handle it. impossible. Yeah, well, we'll have to herd them through single file or to shove themselves off the cliff. Yeah, and with the smell of water coming up to them, they're really going to be pushing and crowding. Cord's right. We'll have to hold them back and let a few down at a time. Some trail boss leading us to this. Well, he thinks it can be done. We'll see about that. Just rest easy, mister, and you'll be all right. All about the name of Cord with your outfit? All right. I guess he must be or you wouldn't mind saying no. And that's the good news I'm after. Yeah. He must be one of the Bates gang. And you hear what he said about good news? That must mean Cord's mixed up with him, working for him or something. Oh, Roddy. Why not? It fits. Look, he takes Mr. Favor's herd over and then leads us down here to get wiped out. It's as simple as that. Oh, Roddy, I don't believe that. Cord's not that kind. I don't know why you can't see that. Or maybe I do see. Maybe it's because Mr. Favor trusted Cord with the herd instead of you. Is that it? Well, I've walked away from Cord long enough. Ah. 
When you get to the top of the cliff, pull aside and help to turn him in. Nolan or Yates will be there to show you. Looks like one of them coming now. I want to talk to you, mister. It'll have to wait. Right now. Roddy, they're getting the water smell. They're getting hard to hold. That's all right. Let them go. Better to lose them that way than to the Bates gang. I don't intend to lose them anyway. Oh, that's right. You don't want to lose them, do you? At least not your share of them. Roddy, what are you accusing him of? I'm accusing him of being in partnership with Bates, that's what. Well, that's nonsense. Yates, I'm ordering you to get back to work, and I've never had to give an order twice. Not until we know who's given the orders here. I've never had to hit a man to make my decision stick, Now I'm not going to start now. You have as long as it takes you to get in the saddle to get back to work or get out. Look out, they're starting to run! They're heading for the cliff! Swept him right off of that cliff. Now, that ain't a man who's thinking only of the money they'll bring. Hit it! All right, we can't hold him here. Let's start him down. You stay at the top and turn him. Good! Hold them here long, they smell out water. Yates? Yeah? We're down now. You want to go, you can go. Are you firing me? They said you quit first. This is more my hurt than it is yours, mister. You didn't care much about him back there. Yeah, well, I ain't quitting. You gonna take my orders? That's right. All right, here's my first. You pick out the six men least able to fight. The seven of you stay here and hold back that herd. Stay here? The rest of you go down to the river with me. Wait, look! It's Mr. Favor! You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. You don't look 
look so hot, though. What's wrong? I'm glad you're back. Roddy thinks Cord's in cahoots with the Bates boys. That's so. Enough to be here. Uh, it wasn't what you thought. No. Good news. I got some bad news, too, though. Joe's dead. Bates boys. Billy Joe. As a matter of fact, the Bates boys are waiting to ambush you in that big clump of sycamores down by the river right now. Guess I'll go down. You men stay here. You don't think you're going down there alone, do you? It's a private fight. That's all right in a fair fight, but this sure ain't. They got a whole gang waiting for you down there. Besides, it is my business. They probably wouldn't even be here if I hadn't talked too much. It's me they want. They let the rest of you through. We'll all go down there together. The deal was I was to take the herd to the river or all the way if you didn't show up. I haven't handed you back your beeves yet. Well, I hate to take my own orders, but Mr. Cord is still in charge till we get to the river. Give me 10 minutes. <laughs> What's all this about? The court came through earlier this year with a herd. He refused to pay tribute to the Bates boys. He didn't give him a fight then because he had a full crew. When he came back through Weberville, he only had one man with him, so they pushed him into a fight. Orville Bates died, so the brothers ever since have had only one thing on their mind, to get cord. Pete, you take Quince and Scarlet. Give him some coverage over that way. Right. Hey, wait a minute, boss. Uh, let me do it, will you? All right. First shot, I pulled this trigger. You might get me, but I promise you not before I get Corey right between the eyes. All right, put down your guns. Corey, turn around. Back up. Back up, Corey. Time to drop their guns. Joe, 
Tell him to lay him down like I say. Lay him down! Now. Get out. Get on your horses and move out. Thanks. Probably a lot of things I should say, Mr. Cord. Well, um, I'll just say this. Anytime uh, Mr. Faber decides to quit, I'd sure try and sign on with you. I'm used to an older ramrod. Well, no, I, I'd ride anywhere you put me. Uh, I might just do that myself. That's right. Thanks, boys. I remember. you'd expect after all they've been through. Guess you could say the same about you. I guess you could. Oh, where will I find you? Find me? For the money I owe you. For the last two days, I should pay you. What a crazy business. Just don't make sense. I'm gonna quit it and go back east one of these days, I swear. Let me know when you do. Hmm? I'd like to hire your crew, every man of them. Showing even better sense than I figured you'd have. They're good. I don't know where they stay with you. Matter of fact, I don't either. I'll be going. Well, thanks. I got them already there. Good beeps.
سند نه دا نه دا since we uh, turned the drive west. Yeah, well, Pete's missing, ain't he? Well, his job is scouting. He's been missing before. In this kind of country, he hasn't. He'll show up. Look, I know West Texas. You're not gonna find any tame reservation Indians around here. Be there Comanches or Apaches. I, I thought you had uh, heard the same news as me about cattle prices up north and... That we had to go west to find decent markets. You're gonna run into trouble. I never knew you to run from trouble before, so what is it? Uh, it's my own business. Have it your way, but uh, we are gonna continue to head west, you know. You're the boss. And don't you forget it. do, but Mr. Faber sure don't like it. If he finds out a man ain't riding his night guard, you better get back to that herd. Man gets tired looking at nothing but darkness. Been out there three, four hours. Look, we're in mighty rough country now. Pete's been missing for two days. If you're smart, you can get back to them beads. All right, all right. Who's out there? Pete! Yeah, it's me. I'm coming in. Hey, the boss is going to be mighty glad to see you. I'm kind of glad to be here myself, Quint. Where is he? Why don't you try the chuck wagon? All right. Hey, Wish, before we put everything away, how about old Pete? Coming right up, Pete. I'll take care of your horses, you know. Pete, about time. You said it's about time. It was a while. I thought I wasn't going to make it at all. I ain't get lost or something. I hate to tell you, but I've been on my feet most all day. Wish that food don't have to be hot. Anything will do. You eat one of my meals, you eat it hot. What happened out there? Apaches. I ran into them just before noon yesterday. Masculero Apaches? How'd you know? Uh, this is their country. On the trail? They're right on it. I swung off a ways, hid in an old willow sink till it got dark. I had to turn my horse loose, so I spent most of the day tracking him. A hunting party or war party? Yeah, what difference does it make with mescaleros? I couldn't make out if they were wearing paint or not. I wasn't sweating to get that close. How many? I saw two different parties, about 40, 50 in each one. Well, it's a hunting party, they'll be after the cattle. It's a war party, they'll be after us. It'll make good sense to me, a double herd back, start north again. By the time we get there, prices could be back up. Well, maybe I was... Wrong in what I said this afternoon about you never backing away from a fight. Look, if you're driving at something, either come out with it or keep it to yourself, will you? Well, I'll just hope I'm wrong. Leave it go with that. But we're still heading west, so now you got a choice. You can take some men out there and double guard tonight. If you don't like that arrangement, draw your pay. What's wrong with him? Don't know. I've been itching at him for three, four days now, and it's just getting worse. I need some men. Mace, Gorman, Garrett, come with me. What for? Never mind what for. Just get your boots on. There you are. Get this down, you goes. Make you feel better. I was feeling pretty good, but I just saw something that turned my stomach. When did they start letting rats join this outfit? What are you talking about? I'll show you. Let me go. 
start this, Mr. Faber. He just tied into me for no reason at all. When did he join this drive? Another fellow rode in right after you left. What's it all about? I knew him in Santa Fe. He's a dirty Comanchero. He was selling rings that the Comanches took off the fingers of white women they'd scalped. They almost lynched him for it down there. That's a lie. I'll show you who's lying, you run. That's enough, enough, Pete! You hear? Well, why did you have to hire a Comanchero? What about it, Mace? I said it's a lie. I never was in Santa Fe. Done a lot of bad things in my life, but I never traded with Comanches, and I can prove it. Might be a good idea, then. All right. I'll show you. Here. Take a look at this. Me and Gorman here were shadowing those mescaleras before we met up with your outfit. Okay. Well, we didn't aim to do any trading with them. Now, if I was a common sheriff, wouldn't I just find the girl and make a trade with the mescaleras for her, huh? Not if you'd been cheating them and they know you for what you are. Oh, there's a lot more money in this, too, Mr. Faber. Why, the government's offering $500 a head for every white captive that's brought back. Hey, how long you figure it's been since you've seen Mace? Not too long for me to remember him. How long? Well, I don't know, six or seven years. Well, now, that is quite a spell of time, you know. You're not gonna let him stay with the drive, are you? He can handle cattle and I need men. Look, why don't you get some rest? I don't need any rest. Ah, Mace, uh, a little night talking to do. Let's go. Thought you was cooked back there. Just keep your mouth shut. Ten miles. Yeah, looks like them Apaches don't aim to let anybody settle in here ever. Must have happened some years ago from the look of it. Well, it could have been like yesterday. Any of them folks there belong to you. Uh, I'd like to ask you something, Mr. Favor. Private like. You got something to say to me? Spit it out. Well, uh, it's about that poster I showed you. What about it? We're real sure that girl is with those mescaleros out there. But getting her away from them is too tough for just Gorman and me, and uh, we thought if you could give us some help. You want to start an Indian war? But she's a white girl, Mr. Favor. And there's others. Besides, there's some real money in it. Oh, uh, we'd split that reward with you. Can't spare any men to go chasing around the countryside looking for some Indians and a girl what may not exist. Oh, well, she's with them, all right. We know. Look, my responsibility is to keep this herd moving and intact. That's my job, and that's all of it. In other words, your answer is no. sister. She was older and practically raised me. I thought a lot of her. I should have remembered you was born in West Texas. That's all right. I'm glad I came back now. You didn't want to, though. Yeah, I know. But I'm glad now. 
Mescaleros do that to your family, Mr. Yates? That's right, Mescaleros. How many of your folks have they killed? That's enough, Mace. About a dozen head of steers missing. Whoever cut them out was riding ponies. Where? At the bend back about a mile. They must use the hill for cover. Uh, I'll go take a look. That's my job, Roddy. Yeah, Roddy can take care of it. You uh, spread the word that mescaleros are around. I don't think you're going to get away with stealing our cattle, either. You understand me? I understand. You are the chief? Ramrod, sort of chief. I am Yuma, Mascalero chief. Good, then you're the one I want to talk to. Some of your people stole some of our cattle. We want them back. I ride to your herd. Pay for them. Pay? We are not thieves. Uh, not for sale. We need the meat for eating. The hunting has been bad for us. They're not for sale. Can't sell them. I send them back. something we just want to talk to you drop the rifle I said drop the Abby Conroy you know the name Abby Conroy I want to find her Do you know what I mean you hear me? <coughs> Abby Conroy, where is she? <coughs> you beginning to get the name now, huh? Abby Conroy. Answer me. I told you to leave the herd. Thought you might need a little help. Let him go. Look, Yates. These Mescaleros have got white captives. Women, slaves. <laughs> What's wrong with trying to find out a little something about them, huh? Because you're hired on to push cattle, that's why. Now get moving. Why did you do this? Uh, we don't pay 
party men to make trouble. Those two disobey? Well, maybe they didn't know any better. Kill them. You are chief. I can't kill them. I think they'll be all right now. You will be sorry. Listen, uh, those cattle, uh, if you need food, why don't you just keep a couple of them, huh? I will pay. No, no, I can't sell them to you. You just go ahead and keep a couple. I don't understand. Most of you come to kill. Nothing but kill. Some of us, not most of us. Too many, some of us. I lived with whites. My father, he thought your ways might be better. I do not think so. Take your gun. I have bad people. Sure, don't let them stay bad for long. Apache law. I say we come here to hunt, not fight. I am chief. I think I'll go on back to the herd if it's all right. got caught by Mescaleros. We came back for help. You men better mount up. We'll show you where they are. You mean you seen another drover caught by Mescaleros and you didn't do anything to help? You're fired, Mace. You too, Gorman. Both of you. Get out. Suppose we don't want to go. What makes you think you got a choice? What about our money? Pay him off, Wish. You're mighty well told I will. Thank you. Thank you. Kapai? 
No, that's fine. What's your name? You knew what I meant when I said water. Water? No, no. It's... Your skin is white. Nobody fires unless I give the word. Understood? We want Roddy back, that's all. Boss, take a look. Somebody's bringing back the beeves. I promise your chief. Our chief? Your ramrod. Where is he? He's hurt. But he's all right. Be back in two, three days. He ask you where. He's all right. Ah, 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 let him go. Let him go? Well, you believe him? Run back the stairs, isn't he? Not now. My name's Rowdy. Rowdy? Yeah, that's my name. You? Fana. Fana. This, uh, this is house. House? Right. Right. That's door. Door? That's the door, right. House door? House? House? What's the matter? I don't know. You're talking English again. Tell me, where's Yuma? Yuma? Yeah, where is he? Gone. Gone where? I don't know. Do you ever have a, another name, Fana? Like Abby? 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 Where did you live, Fana, before you came here? House? I mean, what town? What place? I don't know. You sure the, the name Abby Conroy doesn't mean anything to you? Abby? Conroy. Conroy. Does that mean anything? I don't know. Well, we'll come back. Look, Fana, do you, uh, you have any, uh, any trinkets, uh, that aren't Apache? Rings? No, 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 that, that aren't Apache. Something you had when you were little. Hey, 
You see, Abby Conroy. Me? Yeah, not too much doubt about it. You've got a family in Fort Worth. Family? Yeah. Tell me, how many more are there like you in this camp? Like me? Yeah, white people. Maybe ten? Why are you talking like this? You can't make these people stay here against their will, Yuma. It is not against their will. Well, her and the others, they've got to be slaves. Pana is no slave. Ask her. Do you know what the word slave means? No. Uh, you know. I am not a slave. They do not whip me. I do not have to work more than other women. I have house, door. I have enough food. It is understood. Araki. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Stay here. I don't want to fight with you. I want my people to have peace with yours. Yeah, well, I want the same thing, but she uh, has a family. She ought to have a chance to live with them. It ought to be her choice. We are her family. Since she was very young, we have taken care of her. Yeah, well, she's got folks of her own who have been trying to find her. I don't know how you got her, but you must have taken her by force. It was war. When we fought the white soldiers, some of our children were killed. So we took white children to take the places of those we had lost. Well, look, staying with you, she'd, uh, she'd never, never know which life is better. Will you come with me just long enough to find out which life you like best? No. Look, Fly, you're not Indian. You've, you've got a family of your own who never stopped loving you, never stopped searching for you all these years. I want to stay here with my people. You see? Well, this isn't up to you or me or her, Yuma. You can't keep any of these people, any of them. You will leave here. Yeah, I will, but I'll have to come back. And I'll have to have others with me. You saved my life. I saved yours. When we meet again, we meet as enemies. Stop the herd. Stop the herd? You crazy. I'm asking you as a favor. Stop the herd and call them in. in. Losses is the most important thing I ever asked you. Better be. Be. About Mason Gorman. I fired him. Good. Good. Where you been, Mr. Roddy? He'll tell you when he's ready. Oh, yeah, you need any help getting down? No, I better stay right where I am. I got a lot more riding to do. I've been up there with a 
Mescaleros. I got hurt and they took care of me. I want you to know that before uh, I tell you the rest. Well, the rest is they got White's captive up there. Now, uh, the chief's a good man, but he ain't about to let him go. I plan on going back after him. Appreciate it. Uh, some of you men might come along with me. I'll go with you, Roddy. I'll go along. Uh, me too. Well, I could risk the herd, Mr. Favor. Can't back away from it now, I wish. How many men you want, Roddy? Eight, no more. Abby Conroy in there with them captives, Roddy? That's right, she's there. Well, it didn't take them long to move out. You want to follow them? What chance do we have? Apaches move, they move fast. We've got no chance at all. you get here? Oh, just rode in. Uh, see, who are you? Anna? I'm glad you came. Is all right? I come here? Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you did. I come because... Because you made me remember. Remember what? I do not know. Others spoke words like yours to me a long time ago. I do not know. They made me want to go back. But I do not know what I go back to. Yeah, well, don't worry. We'll, we'll make sure you get back to your family, all right? How will it be? When they see me, will my family want me? Will I be? You'll be fine. I do not know. Maybe I make mistake. My mescaleros, they're all I know. Maybe I be lost between. Maybe my family won't like me. No, they'll like you. They'll like you so much it hurts. Mr. Favor, about this girl. She happened to be Abby Conroy? Oh, yeah. I expect so. Now there's a $10,000 reward for her. Yeah, so? Well, I rode into that Mescalero camp with Rowdy. I took my chances along with the rest. I figure part of that money belongs to me. Yeah, well, the way I figure it, she came in here on her own, and uh, so that reward money don't belong to nobody. I still figure we're entitled to our part. I uh, thought you signed on as a drover, not a bounty hunter. It's not fair, Mr. Favor. I wasn't working as a drover when I rode into that Mescalero camp. And I think the rest of us feel the same way. All right? I figure I got something coming, boss. Who gets the money if we don't? Now, that's a good question, Mr. Favor. Who gets the money if we don't? And just how many of you feel that you got uh, some money coming for that little ride? All of us? Not me, mister. You want me to pay these Jaspers off? That's right, right now. You firing us, Mr. Favor? 
That's right, and you better be out of here the minute you draw your pay. Boss, how are we gonna make out losing that many men? We'll make it. Apaches, Mr. Favor. You think he's got more with him? No, no, let him come in. I come for Fana. She's here because she wants to be. I was fair with you. I brought back your cattle. You give me the girl. This was her choice, Yuma. My people come here to hunt. My hunters are scattered all over. I set a few fires, and hunters turn into warriors, hundreds of them. What? It's up to him. Yuma. You have always been good to me. Speak in our own tongue. I must speak the tongue of my own people. Apaches are your people. I will always love the Apache. All of you. Look at these men. Look at me. I am like them. They are my own kind. I see only men, Fana. Am I not a man? The bravest and the strongest. But these are my own kind. This is not for us to settle. I want this girl. She can stay here as long as she wants. Two men guarding a girl all the time. Wish. They got plenty of ammunition. Still figure we ought to be fired, Mr. Favor? That's right. Grab your pay. Would you listen to something? That girl hadn't even made up her mind whether she wants to stay with us or not. I know you think you're right about this, but it could wind up and all of us getting wiped out. Oh, I hope not. Well, figure the odds. What else can you expect? It'll take the mescalero a while to bring his men together. We can pull out in the morning, fast. Jim, let's wake up the girl and have her get some breakfast. Yes, sir. Well, I've had better morning. A good meal in you, then. Favorite, the girl's gone. Gone? Huh? I don't know how she got away without me knowing it. Lived with Indians, didn't she? Why would she want to go? Uh, trying to find the Mescaleros. Probably thought she'd caused us enough trouble already. She could get real lost out there. Pete, Riley, we'll go after him. You shouldn't be out here by yourself all alone. That's all right. From now on, I'll take care of you. Let go! No, please, let go! What, let $10,000 go? Oh, no. Come on, sister. To me, your money in the bank.
company caught up to her here. Eight or nine horses. All of them shot, so they ain't mescaleros. Curly and the others. Good. Where are you going? Well, I left them, Mr. Faber. I didn't want any part of Mason's play. Mace? Yeah. Him and Gorman was camped at a water hole we come to. We joined up. I didn't think they were bad, but I do now. What about the girl? Mace is acting like he owns her. Like he's going to take his own good time getting her back to her folks. She's just a kid, but the way he looks at her. Will you show us where they are? I can show you where they was when I left. back there. I've been guessing ever since we hit it. Good. I don't know. I didn't think it'd be too hard to track them to the spot I took you to. There's something that ain't too hard to track. Looks like the Mescalero's calling in his braves. Like the herd's gonna need a little protecting, too, doesn't it? Why don't you go on back, you and the others, huh? What about you? Go ahead. That smoke signal up there. Let's get back to the herd. your mind. You come to give back for now? No. And why come? To die? No, I came for help. Help? That's right. fauna has gone. Some of our bad ones took her. Well, your people are all around. I figured you could find her. And I give her back to you? No. No. She stays with you. I was wrong. And she's in trouble because of it. Same men who hit me? Yeah, same men, only there's more with them. Men again! Early enough! Early enough! Come. My men find them. How do you know? See, Flash? Another one there? we look for is in between. How long before you people get here? Maybe a little time. Maybe a little longer time. Uh, that's going to be too long. I'm going to start on down. You're not smart when you don't kill them. Not smart to go to them now before my people come. might be something as a ramrod, Yates, but you weren't too smart to walk in here. Oh, I know. You and your friend probably got others coming, so we're not going to hang around. And we can't be bothered with you. Guess I had enough of him, Mr. Yates. No good for you to fight. No good.
You're not going to hand us over to them, are you? You know what they'll do to us? You want us punished. Hand us over to the white man's law. I guess it won't hurt to turn them loose. Huh? They hurt you? You come in time. Nobody hurt me. Over, Pecos. I'll see you back at the herd. Thanks. Uh, you take good care of her. Huh? You tell my family. I'm thinking about them. But maybe you better not tell them where I am. Yuma says he'll send the others later. He wants what is best for me. Maybe for Apache people, too. Yuma says it must be white man's law now. Apache law dead, like many Apache warriors. You want to ride along with me? I'd like to. Ten good head. Good ones. Leave them behind. Leave them behind? Yeah, human as people. Our hunting season wasn't very good this year. I think they could use them. Reckon they'll find them? Well, yeah, they'll find them. Take a hold of one of these little barbs here, you believe it. You better see this, Mr. Bear. How far does it go? Yeah, plumb across the canyon. Uh, who in creation would want to wire off a trail? You can't farm up here. Nothing up here but rocks and cactus. But that lake is east of here. It's blown dry. No more water, it'll come at you well. It's a good ten miles on. All right, who's got the cutters? All I have. Slice it down the middle, roll it back to the banks. But what happens? There's got to be some reason this fence is up here. I suppose you found a way to keep cow alive without water? No. Then cut it. 
point will be here soon. So cut it quick. Yeah, I'll make it quick, Rowdy. Someday he's gonna say, take your time, boys, and we'll die of the shock. Well, Quince, that's one thing about being trail boss. You can say just about anything you want. Yeah. I don't know. Still wouldn't want to be in his shoes. Well, that's that's where you and me are different. I tell you about Boonesville? No. Well, we had an offer down there. Hit up my own drive. Oh. Why didn't you take it? Well, I wish I knew. Nothing to it, really. Except you can't make any mistakes. Like cutting barbed wire when you don't know the reason it's up here in the first place. I still think we should have checked around a little. Checked around where? In town. I wish one went in there. It's more than for supplies. Ah, we could just just as easily have ridden in there and... I'm gonna probably be riding a little high in the saddle for a while. Get clear out of there! It's real warm in this rut. Get the boss. What about you? I'll get the boss. Don't worry about me. Sister. Brother Gus? Yeah, I see him, sister. Good. Well, you take the left. Brother Charlie, you take the right. I'll just kind of roam around in the middle. Don't come too close. Huh? What do you say, Brother Gus? Should we let him talk to that poor hurting ramrod? Might as well. They're still on their side of the fence. All right, cowpoke, come ahead. Hey, now that is a shame. Oh, she have to beef passage? I don't think so. She would have said. Got 3,000 thirsty steers headed this way. Then you better turn them before I shoot them, boy. Ain't no more horn gonna tramp over my land. Damn that water for three days. They gotta come through. Besides, this ain't your land. You can't fence off open trail. You want a bet? Jim, you think there's a chance of scaling that mountain and getting around behind her somewhere? Well, not unless I knew where they had their lookouts posted. Well, they sure ain't gonna let us in map the place first. Yeah, that's for sure. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I'm hurt. <clears throat> Somebody's gonna patch me up. What makes you think they'd uh, take you back up in the canyon? They'd probably just send somebody down. Well, then we'd have a hostage, wouldn't we? Well, even a nester wouldn't be dumb enough to fall for a trick like that. We ain't gonna know till we try. True. All right. Lady! You got a doctor? Why? Man's hurt here. Need some help. Uh, he 
wasn't hurt so bad he couldn't pull a trigger. They got something up their sleeve. I'm moving back a little. No, hold it, Gus. Cowhand's too dumb to be tricky. Probably too dumb even to back away from a fight unless he knows he can't win it. What if we showed him they couldn't win? Your party. All right, mister, send him through. I'll see what I can find out. Spider and the fly. Huh? Oh, she'd bleed almighty quick. I think I'd better try and tag along with you, huh? He's taking off his gun belt. We didn't invite both of them. Well, they ain't just any two. How far do you suppose a herd could get without a trail boss and a ramrod? that water just where you said we would. What happened to your crippled up friend, Rose? Oh, well, he had a little accident back there by the barbed wire, but he'll know better next time, won't you? Oh, isn't it just like me, bringing two strangers to the house and not even knowing your names? What's your name? Rowdy Yates. Yours? Favor. Favor? Yates, I want you to meet my brothers. This is Eddie, that's George, that's Otto, Frank, Walter, Albert, and Pete. Left Charlie back there by the boulders. That's Brother Gus. Gentlemen. Eddie, last time I noticed that old medical kit of mine was in the barn. Would you be kind enough to get it for me? Yes, ma'am. You're a medical kit? Yeah. You the doctor? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, what? You're a woman. Well, danged if I ain't. What about it? No woman's gonna patch me up. Who patched you up when you were a baby, or Paul? Oh, no. Oh, no. All right, boys. Oh, no. Oh, no, you don't. when they used to go home on a raid. Oh, you mean the hideout gun under the shirt? Yeah, that's the one. Maybe you ought to relieve favor of his artillery. We wouldn't want him to fall down and shoot himself. Now, would we? Mr. Favor? Was she in the war? A general? No, sir. Just a Jayhawker like the rest of the family. Mr. Cornelius, I hope you realize you're in a fight you can't win. Now, this canyon's been open trail since the Spanish mapped it. She just can't hold back a whole trail herd. She's already held two back, Mr. Fair. Two? Yes, sir. Texas herds? Yes, sir. I believe they decided to head west. And then they went north up through the foothills. Texas men run from a Kansas woman. Yes, sir. I've heard everything. Yes, sir. And I really would suggest that you'd run, too. Unless you want to just sit out here and uh, the whole season and miss your market. Mr. Cornelius, if my herd sits out there one more day, I'm not going to have a herd to take to market. They're dying of thirst. Well, that's a problem. So will you please tell your sister to have that wire down by noon? Oh, yes, sir. Would you also like me to tell the tide to stop and the earth to spin backwards for a while? But look, you're a man. What are you so mighty afraid of her for? Now, sometimes we get fear and habit all mixed up, Mr. Favor. Rose has bossed this family ever since her folks died. She showed good sense and we've prospered. But I'll grant you, somebody ought to stand up to her. For her sake, too. What on earth does she want this canyon for, anyway? Farm it. Farm? Well, she can't farm this land. She can't? Well, now that is a shock. 
I guess we'll just have to take that whole barn load of food she harvested and put it back in the ground. Mr. Favors, she'd farm the moon if she could get to it. And I'm not too sure she can't do that. But is she anyways a witch? <laughs> no, sir. She's just the smartest, toughest, stubbornest one human being you'll ever run into. Why, when she was four, she could outspell and outfigure any school teacher that come to this house. At 12, she could cook better than a Boston chef and sew better than a Philadelphia tailor. I never seen a man could match her, except one. Who? President Abe Lincoln? <laughs> no. He was a major, 46th Illinois Rifle. Came up through our neck of the woods on a recruiting trip. Looked a little bit like you, matter of fact. I mean, the uh, same height, and same color and all. And uh, just about as stubborn. And too stubborn to marry you, too, I hope. Uh, he was killed at Vicksburg. Oh. Yes, sir. He looked a whole lot like you. So bad, was it, Yates? Was it? Where's my hat? What's your hurry? Come on, come on, give me my hat. <laughs> I hope you found out everything you wanted to check on. Uh, I didn't come here for anything except to get the box out of my, out of me. Yeah, well, you have it your own way. Too bad you couldn't stick around and meet the rest of my brothers, though. The rest of them? Yeah, the big ones. They're on guard duty, making sure nobody comes in over that mountain. Yates, you know, you strike me as being a lot more sensible than that bull-headed boss of yours. Maybe you ought to tell him about those lookouts and about how stupid it would be to try and tromp through my canyon. Well, I can't tell him anything. I ain't trail boss. Oh, Yates. Now, leading is a matter of convincing. You may be smart enough to decide the best way of doing a thing. But unless you can convince someone you're right, you don't deserve to be boss. really very scenic. I hope you enjoy it. Well, I don't see how I can do that, considering I'm going by way of the canyon. You still set on that? Very set. I guess maybe we'll just have to keep you all here in the guest room until your boys move those cows out and around those mountains. Let's see now. It should be, I reckon, a few minutes past 10. Mr. Yates and I are back to the herd by 10.30. My men have orders to come and get us. All 25 of them. You're bluffing. You want to see my hand, fella? I mean, lady, uh, all you have to do is call it. You know, I can't rightly remember when I've met any human being that I felt such simple revulsion toward as I do you. Well, now, I must say, the feeling is so mutual.
about you two? What'd you decide on? No choice. We gotta find some ways to get through. Don't that be so easy, Senor Favor? Well, there's another way. Maybe we could go. Look, you wanna go west? You go west. We gotta take those cars down that canyon. Yeah, right. Well, there's no other way we can go. But what's on your mind, Roddy? Well, the way I figure, Sister Rose hasn't got a legal leg to stand on, right? Right. Well, why don't we go get a sheriff? Let him cut the wire for us. This is a town not too far from here. I'm afraid that woman wouldn't let a sheriff any closer than she'd let us. Besides, is there time? Either our horses get to water soon, or I would not answer for any one of them. Well, look at it this way. If we go through that canyon and we kill somebody, we'll probably get stuck around here for six months on a murder charge. We'd lose the whole herd. Hmm. Ah, all right. You come into town with me. Jimmy, take over. Rowdy, uh, are you sure you ain't already trail boss? Ah, uh, well, Quince. Ooh. Bossing ain't so hard. It's just a matter of convincing, that's all. How long a ride it is into that town? Way. Big Will makes Mr. Sullivan look like the short doll on a wedding cake. There goes the mirror. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Yeah, Brian, personalized undertaking. Uh, I hate to be killed during break up a good fight, but I'm afraid there's a friend of ours in there that might need a little assistance. Now, would you mind go getting a sheriff before somebody gets hurt? A sheriff? Why, there ain't been no sheriff in El Crucero for six months. Big Will don't approve of sheriffs. What Big Will says goes, huh? Yeah. How come you let this fella, Big Will, buffalo you like that? What? Yeah, before I back up, back up, make way for my out. Who? I said, how... I heard. Three. Did that answer your question? What are you doing, fella? Yeah, you're supposed to be getting supplies. That did it. Now he's made me mad. Break your... Uh, put him down, huh, mister? Go away, boy, before I slap you at that. I said, put him down. Yeah. I could have had him in another minute. Uh, sure. Anybody know where this fella lives? Uh, yes, he lives in the canyon there. Last name wouldn't be Cornelius, would it? Yes, it would. Yeah, 
I'll take him back on your horse. Get the herd started. You can go back with Wish in the wagon. All right. All right. Come on. Rise and shine. Rise and shine. That's it. What a nice day. Yeah. Come on. Let's go. Move. Supplies, all right? Well, yeah, sure, but what are you two doing in town? Uh, some barbed wire strewn across the trail. We came in to get the sheriff to cut it down. Well, you're out of luck. They don't have any sheriff. Yeah. Uh, I guess you were kind of surprised at what happened, weren't you? Yes, sir, neighbor. I'm frank to admit I was surprised. Funny you didn't recognize him. Who? Oh, Gil Favor, the last of the really great lawmen. The last of the what? Lawmen. Oh, yes, uh, lawmen. You mean he wears a badge? Oh, well, uh, not right now. Uh, he's between assignments, you might say. You might say that. Wish, uh, Wish, do you remember the, you remember the time that Gil uh, brought in young Billy? Not that Billy. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's brought in so many, they kind of all run together in my mind. this small. No, no, he could never consider a thing like that. Of course, if maybe you all got together and uh, appointed him, what could he do? What could he do? So, Who's this? Oh, another Cornelius. Neighbor? Yeah? I want to talk to you! Well, then, come on down, girl. Let's go, boy. me out. He knocked you out? Now, nobody's ever done that before, not even me. Well, I guess this is the first time for everything, Rosie girl. Rosie? You talk like you got a slick, Mr. Favor. Oh, I have, Brother Gus. You see, I intend to have Big Will here right alongside me when I cut that wire. Oh, really? What makes you think I won't shoot at my own kin, Favor? Would you? No. Shoot around him, though. He may be wide, but he ain't wide enough for all of you to hide behind. Woman, you are the... Hmm. 
Faber. Mr. Faber. Mr. Faber, sir. Mr. Bryant, we're a little busy here right at the moment, and I have the feeling we're going to be a lot busy in a minute. Yeah, well, that's fine. That's fine. I like to see a busy peace officer. Peace officer? By order of the town council, I hereby appoint you sheriff of El Crucero County. And I'm mighty sorry we didn't recognize you the very first minute you rode into town, Marshal. What the blue blazes? Boss, I'm, I'm really sorry. They wormed a secret out of me. Oh, you. Which secret? Well, you know, about you and your fine, brave work cleaning up the West. The appointment was unanimous. You can't back down now. Oh, I can't, huh? Well, boss, if you're the law, then that means the law is on our side, doesn't it? Now, hold on just a minute. Now, shut up, will you? Mr. Bryant, is this, uh, real, legal? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Well, 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 well. Rose Cornelius? I order you, in the name of the law, to open this here pass or suffer the consequences. Oh, you do, do you? Well, let me tell you something. Mr. Bryant, what would you say would be the penalty for uh, obstructing justice and, and insulting a peace officer? Well, I don't know. In 30 days? That sounds about right. Oh, Big Will, you can go on back home. We won't be needing you no more. Now, you take your clammy hands off me! Show it to the judge, Put lady. Put me down! Shut him down, Gus! But Rose, he's the law. Crusader of El Crucero, the captain of the clan Cornelius. And yet she, yep, she kicks, she wiggles like uh, any other mortal female. You got the sense <laughs> of humor of a ghoul in the graveyard at midnight. Did you know that? It ain't funny. <laughs> Sorry. No man ever got the best of me, and no man ever will. It ain't funny! Hey! Untie your hands? Now, what do you want to do that for? So if I try to escape, you can shoot me in the back? Hey, you know, it might solve a lot of problems with that. Well, I can't walk, so you might as well forget it. Who ain't that a mess? Wash off. Nothing but good clean dirt. No. Look at that. Which is butter. I'll have to put a plot of this. Just drop the seeds and jump back. What would a cowpuncher know about farmland? Well, I know I'd like to have about a hundred or so acres of this. I'd like to get the feel of growing and creating things. Put up a barn right over there. Put the house up in that ride. Dirty too? No. You remind me of somebody. Hmm? Probably a picture I saw of Lucifer in a book once. <laughs> Not though, so. Read much? Yeah. Cuts the loneliness. How on earth can you ever get lonely around a bunch like that? Don't seem possible, does it? But it happens. Those. How come you picked the canyon to settle down? I like the looks of the soil. It's about 80% rock. I don't know. What's it matter anyway? It really matters. Just interesting that uh, you choose a place that you knew you'd run into a fight. I didn't know. Matter of fact, you're the first one that's had the courage to fight. I kind of admired you for it. 
Well, not not at mine exactly. Oh, that I look a mess. Don't know why I should care though. I'm only going to jail. Artillery, too? Yeah, well, I mean, with Rose here in jail and everything, I thought. Well, the ten brothers are still out there, though. All ten of them. Yeah, but. Uh... Oh, oh, I get it. Can she hear me? I doubt it. Well, how about this? How about uh, me going out and starting a rumor that maybe you're mistreating her here in jail? And the brothers are going to have to leave and come on down here and get her out. So as soon as they move out of the canyon, then we move right on through. Very good, except for one point. Yeah, what's that? She ain't here. Released her. You released her? What'd you release her for? She'll just go right back up in that canyon. Yep. Well, she's the cement that holds that family together. How are we gonna get across there now? She's a woman. Women's been known change their minds? Oh, not that woman hasn't. Well, I, I guess there's nothing left to do except go back to her and figure something else out. Well, you go on and head back. I, uh, I got some thinking to do. Yeah, well, you can do some thinking back at the drive, can't you? Well, I... I, um... Yeah? I'm thinking of quitting the drive. What was that? It's such a crazy idea. We've talked of it before. Sure, we've all talked about it, but... You know that stretch of land to here in the canyon? Yeah. Well, it ain't never been filed on. It's all clear. I was thinking of grabbing me off a hundred acres of it or so. Well, sure, yeah, it's great land and all, but I thought you were going to wait to settle down until you met a woman that you... Oh, oh, no. I never said nothing about no woman. You didn't, you didn't have to. Now look, boy. Look, I mean, it's your life, but, uh, but what about the herd? After all, you know, you, you got a herd to run. Who's gonna head the herd up? You qualified, ain't you? Me? You've headed it before when I was sick or gone off somewhere. The owners wouldn't object. Trail boss? Yeah, yeah, until I make up my mind one way or the other. Unless you don't want it. Take the job, it's just a... All right, then. Now get out of here and give me a chance to think, will you? Take the wagon with you. I won't be needing it. Right, uh... You keep me informed, will you? I'm trail boss. <laughs> Whoopee! I'm Red Riding Hood. through? I don't know. 
ask her, though. What happens if uh, she says no? Look, Mr. Favor, the, the men weren't exactly excited about the idea of following you through that canyon. And when they find out I'm heading up the drive, I don't know. You scared of it? No, I'll go alone if I have to. But... Well, I was just thinking about the owners. Is it going to be fair to them? Well, we'll be moving out at 7 o'clock. So I don't see you. Gus, what's come over her anyway? Just relax, George. Relax? Do you know what she's doing inside that bedroom? What is that stink? I didn't have any perfume, so I crushed some honeysuckle blossoms. Get me some pockets. You see? I sure do. Don't suppose there have been any visitors dropped by. Just how would you expect them to get past the lookout? I left word. Rose, you sure you're not sticking your chin out too far? You can't be certain he'll show up. some agreement we can come to. All right. That herd has to be in Comanche Wells by sundown. We'll um, keep the herd away from the house and the barn. We'll do our best to keep them clear of the crops. But we're coming through. We? I thought you wanted to start something brand new here, Favor. Why should those cows concern you any more than they do us? It won't concern me once they're safely through. In the railhead stockyards. I don't understand. You know what kind of a woman I am, Favor. You couldn't possibly expect me to back down on a point as important as this. No, I guess I couldn't. I even guess that's part of the reason why I like you so much. Let me win this one. 
Make this one concession. I won't ask you again. If I did, what would you think of me? I'd be proud. Sure then. Well. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Favor. Don't you get the joke of it yet? We just keep trying to cut each other down to size. Die in the attempt. And whoever cut the best, you're the biggest loser. tell you something I've never told any man before in my life. I love you. But I swear, if you cross that wire, I'll kill you. Straight through to the end of the line. And everything's set. Only one thing, I, uh, I never did cut that bottom strand down there. Oh, yeah. It seemed those posts weren't any too stout. Give me some cover, huh?
I'll be back this way in just a couple of months. Oh, well, ain't that sweet. What am I supposed to do, get out the flags and lead a parade? Well, don't you press your luck, mister. Next time, I'm going to oil that trigger first. If this is what love means, I don't want any part of it, not ever. Hey, good looking. Who, me? Well, I sure didn't mean him. Who does this land belong to? Why do you want to know? Well, I'm looking for a homestead. Settle down. Find me a sassy wife. Then you're in the wrong pew, Buster. This land's mine. At least it will be as soon as I can get to town to claim it. Now, shove off! Now, look, lady. If you and me are going to be neighbors, you're going to have to mend your ways. I said I was looking for a sassy woman. Not a loudmouth. You? Or am I out of line, mister? Oh, no, look at me. Um, I'm just uh, passing through. Are you going to let me go, or do you want a good sock and a jaw? <laughs> Sassy and spirited. has lifted from me the burden of being young. Unhappily, the weight gets distributed elsewhere. It's been a far ride, Mr. Pence. Almost done now. Where's the glory? Who'll ever know way out here? Hello. Mr. Candless, I'm from New York. The Register? Maybe you read it. Largest circulation in the USA. We've been doing some stories on the West. Readers gobble it up, you know. Well, now, this young fellow and I, we met up in Albuquerque. He asked me to be Boswell to his Johnson. Observe the occasion, as it were. You know, ardent young challenger versus the deadliest gunfighter in the West. I don't know who you are, but you want to be famous? Then be the man who was smart enough to stand out of my husband's way. You be the man who watched Gerd Canlis go home. Well, maybe he'll loan you his guns. Hey, how about it, Canlis? You want your little lady to stand up for you? Can't hold 
this long. It's clip hammered. Liable to go any second. Now you pull your gun, aim it at me. When you're set, fire. Would you let me ride along with you, Mr. Canlis? That is, if I could switch to that wagon of yours. A man with your style deserves more than just a column in a newspaper. A book, Mr. Canlis. Ah. How would you like for me to put you in a book? Name me a prize. Tradition comes first, even above cattle. It's the way. I see. Until the boys get spruced up again, we're gonna have a little more fiesta again tomorrow. Yes, sir! Me about Gil I have my black shirt, Augusta. I do no such thing. There's one thing I believe in. You. I don't have to ask about Gil Favor. You make a perfect target. Black against those white walls. I wish you hadn't learned that kind of knowledge. You wear a white shirt tomorrow. Tell me what you see down there, Augusta. People. Happy people. What do I see? Mm. 
whitewashed walls. Where the sun stands at noon, at one, at two, does the steeple block it? Where are the reflections from which window, which water trough? How do the shadows fall? Where a heel might catch a foot slip on three sides of the plaza with white walls. So you wear black. You create an easy target, an outline fixed in the mind of Don Miguel. A thing in black locked on his front sight. But suddenly, when the moment comes, you change positions and now you're there. In the doorway of that church. The dark open doorway. And the blackness of the chapel coming up behind you. Black against black. it off. I'll leave him a gun belt here. No reason to alarm all those happy people. Augusta, would you tell me again about that place of yours where, where we're going? Oh. Um. Eight white pillars guard the front. And, and greyhounds Papa brought from Italy scamper on the lawn. All the way, all the way down to the river that lawn goes. And you can smell the sweet swamp land and all the rich honey earth around. And inside our house, there's a double staircase so that mother and daughter can make stunning entrances together, trying to outdazzle that crystal chandelier that Papa brought from Vienna. And oh, from the kitchen, odors and, and spices is so pungent. It's just gonna drive us wild. And these chips of cake. My, that is something to look forward to. Don't leave me, Augusta. Don't ever leave me. Oh, well. I don't have the sense. Ya saben ustedes perfectamente lo que se tiene que hacer. Ustedes me ponen los farolillos en aquellos arcos. Uh, y tú a ella. Y tú me haces el favor de colgar eso en la casa de huéspedes, en la puerta. ¿Seguro? Sí. Sí, sí mata. The doors of the chapel are always open. Unlike doors to heaven. In either case, all you have is to enter. They always let... They represent prayers for the safe return of Don Miguel and his tiboleros. When is that? Tomorrow. Will they be let tomorrow? During the fiesta? Not very likely. Unless you care to light one yourself. Bienvenido, compadre. 
Where are your amigos? What amigos? At the camp. Those who will ride with you to take Don Miguel's cattle to the east. He blessed the drinks. San Jose is good for all troubles, like my botillas. You know, Padre Tasso, he said to me, Manuel, you wish a santo in your cantina? Put him there. San Jose has seen worse and suffered more than a few poor barachos. <laughs> I think you are one smart vaquero, no? About what? By tomorrow, there will not be room in here to raise an elbow. From wall to wall, no room. They say it is the wise man who drinks the day before, no? No, day after. Don Miguel, is he a wise man? Si, <sighs> amigo, most wise, most generous, most brave. We will see him again tomorrow. He will make his pony to dance across the plaza, holding his lance up high. And behind will come the burros and the caretas, heavy with buffalo meat. Yeah. To Don Miguel. To Don Miguel. Is he as good with a gun as a lance? Si, sí, amigo. He has only to point with his gun so. And the bullet goes where he points, as if the gun were a part of his very own flesh. No, no, senor. We drink to Don Miguel. There is no charge. Tomorrow. Si, sí, senor. Hasta mañana. speak against it. Let it be Lope de Cruz who rides at my side through the plaza tomorrow. to know for whom the bell tolls. It doesn't toll for us. Hmm? It's the Angelus. The Angelus is a devotion commemorating the Annunciation. Said it morning, noon, and evening. You know, Augusta, a man could never really get to know all of you. Well, coming down here and finding you isn't the only reason I'm here. I'm going to go to church. Unless I can charm you out of this foolishness. Fifteen hundred dollars now. That's a lot of charming. Is that what they're paying you? But we don't need their blood money. We got all that and more in Baton Rouge just sitting there waiting for us. was there. No. No. Just 
no shack in the swamps with fodder corn piled at the window for one old skinny hog. Breakfast on, on pale grits and sweet potato coffee. I was 14 when they fought a battle hard by Union troops and our young men. I could hear the artillery. It sounded so far away, but they hit that place of ours and... That dumb old hog that never could get fat. And Mama and Papa. I just... I just wanted to make you want it. I just wanted to get you back south. Augusta. We're past all that. We're really going back. That's why I wanted us to come on us with each other before tomorrow. And when it's done, and they pay me my $1,500, we have our lives ahead of us. No more games. You die tomorrow. who come for the cattle of Don Miguel. Do you know where they are? See, si. There's one. Send your favor. You ask for him and tell him the lady said Don Miguel must not come to the plaza tomorrow. But why not, senora? It is his plaza. You just do what I say, you understand? Now run along here.
The cook tells me that she's got the best enchiladas in the territory. She's saving a table for us downstairs. You know I can never eat before. Oh, that's all right. In case you get hit in the stomach. This is no time for that. When is the time for that? You think I enjoy this? Well, you're sure giving a good imitation. Look, where's the joy in that? What's happened? I don't know. Maybe I do. Maybe I want to live after all. A man can get killed like that. You give it away a piece at a time. A piece with each man you drop, and each man takes his part of you until you forget who took what. I can stand that. What I can't stand is seeing they took you too. Don Miguel? Don Miguel? Oh, such dedication. The middle of the night yet, bristling to start the drive. Compadre, there's a gunfighter waiting for you in Aguacielos. You see, Lope, it never stops. There are those who have the grass and water and those who want the grass and water. It's Gerd Canlis. Mm. At least they flatter me with the best. Still, it could be worse. I have heard that Canlis has never fired first. So we have no problem, since I have never fired first either. Uh-uh, that's been tried before, too. But Candace has a great talent for forcing an issue. Now, I hate to mess up your fiesta, but I would recommend very highly staying out of the plaza altogether tomorrow. You stay away, and that way you'll have to ride off with his guns on fire. But where's the punta door in that? All right, there's not much honor in it, but there's a lot of living and quite a bit of sense, boy. I will kill him. Lope! Senor Favor is right. You and the others will ride in with a buffalo. I will go directly to the hacienda. Hide? Now, wait. Lope! If you like that boy, you'd better stop him. How? Feel the weather. I didn't see any reason to wake you for that. Go on, go back to sleep.
Si vivis, ego te absolvo pecatis tuis, y nomine patris, et fili, espíritu santo. Amén. Who was he? I said, who was he? Don't I have the right to know the name? Both, to know and to remember. Lope de Cruz. Casta? They say you give the word and they'll come in wearing iron instead of their Sunday best. But they want it understood now. This is for you, not Canlis. Now, I told you to tell them that they do have a choice. It ain't for me and it ain't even for Canlis. It's just to try and stop this whole thing before the whole area becomes a shooting gallery. Uh, what they'd really rather do is go to the fiesta. You know, baile, fandango. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry about that. Should be finished by now. I'll see. Forgive me, Senora. I uh, stayed on my knees longer than usual. One prays for many things, but uh, forgiveness is all he can truly hope for. It is the thing he needs the most, forgiveness. Yes, forgiveness. I should have stopped him, I know. Shot him in the leg if it came to that. He would have healed. It would still possess life. I thought of the same thing. I thought sometime I'll just shoot him in the hand. He, he, he'd never forgive me, but, but he'd be alive. I never could do it. Senora, if you wish, I will call my housekeeper. Perhaps he has something you would care to try on. Oh, no, no. I, how I look is unimportant, but what I ask is... Gerd came here to kill you, but for once, things didn't go the way he planned. I know what he's going through right now. He probably thinks I left him for good. He's he probably wondering about a lot of things. But I think that just this once, I may be able to make him leave. I, I just might be able to get him to listen to me. I just ask you one thing. To let us ride out of this valley together. To let us leave. Senora. I have no desire to stop him. And what about your men? Like that man that tried to kill him? I have commanded that there be no violence unless your husband starts it. Don't make it. You'd better make some more commands. There's certainly no peace party out there. Please. Promise me. I promise, Senora. If you act at once, I do not know how long they will listen, but I will try. Thank you. I'll ride you back, Augusta.
glad you left me. What would I do with all that plantation? What are you doing? Write me a goodbye note? Yesterday, Augusta, down by the church, I made you admit there was no plantation. Not because I wanted to embarrass you or expose you, but because I wanted everything between us to be honest. Why shouldn't that go for me, too? There are some things I haven't talked to you about. And I wanted you to know, not as an excuse for the things I've done, but because now is the time. I thought later on they'd come up here, find the note, and send it on to you. I wanted you to know the reason for this rage at the world and how it all started because some Barbary Street crimp shanghaied me and kept me three years at sea. And how finally, when I got back, it became easier and easier to kill, then harder, and how it wore off. Partly because I, I wasn't sure anymore. Mostly because of you. I'm just sorry it didn't wear off sooner. But there's still the time. I talked to Don Miguel and he said, he said we can ride out of here if we go now. You don't believe that? Oh, Gert, I've got to. I've still got to do what I came to do. But you said it was all worn out. You said it was all done. You were writing it in that letter. You were supposed to read that, Augusta, after. Gert? What gun are you going to use on Don Miguel? A strange question. Will you answer me? I carry my rifle, wear my 45s. Depends on the range, how and when he's going to make his move. Well, that's good, because it would present a problem if you use the shotgun. When you make your move, where do you figure Don Miguel's going to be? In the center of the plaza or the east or the west? Of course, it doesn't make any difference because it's a small plaza. Any part of it's easy range from up here. Open my trunk, will you, Gert? a gun that killed Ben Cole in El Paso last month. You'd been shaking and talking in your sleep all night. And when Cole rode into town that morning, he had a look on his face like a hound dog that's got his possum treat and just waiting for it to drop. So I went out and I I bought that gun, and I came back to the room, and I sat behind the curtain, and I waited, and I prayed. Oh, God, let me be wrong. Please don't make me have to do it. How could I live with myself if I have to kill a man? But how could I live without Gerd? He was facing me not more than 50 feet away when he drew down on you. You remember? It was right after you left the hotel. You were on your way to the stable. There were three shots. Two of them sounded like one, mine and Ben's. Yours was late. Ben was already dead. Oh, I knew it. I felt his slug brush my neck even as I fired. I'm dead, I thought, but Ben fell, not me. I knew someone had bushwhacked him, because I missed him. Me? I see my 
myself as a corpse at Ben Cole. Anybody feels to the contrary, they'll have to convince me. Have them bring our wagon around, Augusta, and the trunk from upstairs. If the senor will honor me, Cielo, senora. It would not have happened. He came with death. He must go with death. No! No place in this town, Miguel. No honor, no pride, no future. Agua Cielos is more than a place. It is a way of life. It has been offended, invaded. Unless it makes an example, it will be offended again, invaded again. I will fight him for you, for all our children. If you try to stop me, forgive me. I will fight you. I'm sorry, senor, but his words are my thoughts. You can kill him easily. Possibly, I will prove more difficult. We shall have to fight. Don Miguel! Bring the children here. Let my husband beg their forgiveness. Let them see him throw his guns away in front of him. Then they can see that, that peace can be bought without killing. Felipe? If he humbles himself, if he makes a public fool of himself, then I will stand aside. Let him run away like the coyote. Tell him you're ashamed you came here. Tell him I'm ashamed too. Tell, tell him neither 
one of us is worth saving. Just the love we have for each other. I came here, man, and that's the way I'm going to leave. or as far as you want it, whenever you want it. I drop my hands. Take off my guns. Don't bring your children. Bring your dogs, your chickens, your cattle. All of them are better than me. Yeah. Oh. 